All right. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I'm a senior advisor to the uh, Association of Danish Architectural Firms, and I work with uh, sustainability. And I'd really like to extend an invitation to uh, an event that we're launching two years from now, the Union, the International Union of Architects uh, World Conference in 2023 uh, in Copenhagen, where we're going to take a status on what is the progress on the uh, United Na- Nations uh, or, or Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, and uh, we really love to to see some uh, some great um, work here uh, for 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 markets. And I hope that the COVID situation will be good. We have been working a lot about the uh, the question about how does architecture really create value? Because we see that uh, a lot of people don't 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 quite know what architects do and uh, and doesn't quite appreciate you know what is what what is it actually? Uh, which is evident when you see a, a, an image like this, you know. Which is a, a, an advertisement from a real estate agent asking, you know, well, when the architect wants grass on the roof, who has the kind of the sole hat on? So obviously, this is a challenge to us as architects, you know, to actually be uh, be more uh, consistent and actually more vocal about, you know, what is the the, the, the value we create. So in order to ask to 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 give some replies to that question, we set out a, a, a question you know, to call for, for cases, and we really wanted these to be evidence based. But that turned out to be pretty pretty much a, a a challenge because we don't really document the value of what we do as architects. Um, so what we thought would have uh, taken half a year, you know, took us two years uh, to produce a collection of uh, some 70 plus. 75 plus uh, cases of all sorts of value created by architectural design, be it at the uh, building scale, the urban scale. And the good news is that uh, there are actually people out there who have tried the, the thing with the uh, grass on the roof. This is a anthropological, ethnographical museum outside uh, Aarhus, one of the, uh, uh, well, the second greatest, uh, second biggest city in, in Denmark, uh, designed by uh, hitting glass and architects, and there's a lot of nice things to be said about this uh, this uh, project. Uh, you know, there's a climate um, adaptation. There's a you know energy efficiency question. There are research facilities, education facilities in this museum. So you could say that it actually contributes to several of these uh, United Nations uh, Deve- Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, and I'm going to be completely reductive, you know, and just figure out one contribution that I think is interesting. They multiplied the number of visitors by uh, a factor of seven. And that is, of course, good to sell a lot more tickets. I'm sure the director would appreciate that. But if we think about what, what a number like this actually signifies, you know, it's a boost to education. It's a boost to the public's uh, curiosity about our shared path, where do we come from, what, what, is the, what is the relationship to our landscape, the resources, how did we grow, you know, as a population and so on. And I think this is uh, really, you know, just a, a step stone to understanding uh, some of some of the, the wider aspects of, of what architects can tr- con- contribute to uh, society with. So I think there's an interesting polarity between measurement and meaning. If you think about what does actually value signify, you know, what is it that we uh, give value and how do we actually measure it, you know? Uh, so some of the cases really opened our eyes to, to the power of architecture. You know, there are psych- uh, psychiatric facilities here where they happen to reduce the uh, use of force after moving in. And there's a lot of detail to that, how that was connected. And if you reduce use of force, you also reduce the number of work accidents, which is really a cost driver because uh, sick leaves uh, due to accidents is really a, uh, well, a, a serious uh, cost, not only in monetary terms, but also in human terms. So the question is really about, you know, documenting value, the value side of architecture, because as an architect, you work with costs, you know, it, it's sort of present at, at every stage of, of, of the process when you design things. But since we're not so good at documenting the benefits, you know, in, 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 in more hard facts, uh, it sort of gets out of the equation, you know, uh, and we want to introduce that into the business model. Not only, you know, uh, in monetary sense, but, you know, with a wide range of sustainability terms, uh, social, environmental and economic terms. It is possible to work carbon neutral if we're looking at the environmental costs, of course, and uh, and the tricks are pretty well known. It's also uh, possible to, to reduce the energy efficiency uh, or the, the energy use of, 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 of existing buildings, which we know is one of the hugest, you know, 
sustainability uh, challenges that we face, you know, in, in Europe in the coming years. And we can do that, you know, by actually identifying the city, adding new facilities, shared communal uh, roof terraces so everybody has access to sun. And since these uh, properties at the top, you know, are very, um, very sought after, you know, they can actually finance the whole intervention. So some of these cases uh, solve, you know, um, or, you know, in, improve the livability of cities in a num number of ways. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a park where I used to grow up in a very uh, derelict quarter at that time. Um, and uh, this is a climate mitigation process, project that also gives new facilities for urban life, you know, exercise facilities, flea markets, and so on. And you can measure how the uh, the use of the um, of the public space has increased uh, quite a lot, and you see new businesses opening and um, and a new sense of, of of activity happening in this space. Um, if you look at you know well, this was actually a rather cheap uh, project, it cost two and a half million uh, euro, and if and it has some some side effects because actually people think that it's really nice to live in the vicinity of this one mile, uh, one and a half kilometer long park. So property prices went up and that's necessarily not good, you know, um, but it is a sign of people appreciating the uh, the new qualities of the urban environment. Uh, of course, uh, there's a gentrification question also here. Um, but if you look at it in, in terms of, uh, you know, a, a business model for the municipality, this was um, an investment that really improved urban life conditions in the area. And it has paid itself back in only one and a half year. Because if you see at the rising property prices, well, people take, pay, pay tax on top of that. So uh, the increase in taxes uh, has actually paid back this investment, you know, in one and a half year. So I think that uh, this is this is interesting, you know, um, in terms of the power of good design and and these uh, you know uh, big scale urban design decisions that are happening. So what we're seeing now is the sustainability uh, discussion really moved from from you know environmental uh, terms into social terms, and we're really keen to document that because we think that is really where the value lies, you know. At the moment, we're, we're obsessed with building costs, you know, but, and we're beginning to, to, to assess, you know, the, the, the life cycle cost of the building, you know, including maintenance and repairs and uh, future modifications and so on. But what is actually the impact on the people living in or working in these buildings? That might be a huge, you know, economy that is many times bigger than what it actually costs. The, the, the extreme case of this is hospitals where the construction budget, you know, one year of running a hospital, two years of running a hospital, well, the entire, the entire uh, expenses, you know, used once, once over for, for the operation of the building. What if we can boost the, the operation, just a fraction of a percent, you know, that money was well spent, well spent. So what we learned is that we have to go back to the crime scene and understand what is happening. How are users appreciating the buildings? What are they doing with the buildings? What do they want from the buildings? So as to really figure out, you know, what is happening and how can we feed that back into the uh, design process so that we plan in a more intelligent way, that we design better, that we're smarter in the process. That is really what we want to do. So we could see some patterns here and we decided to publish that in this book, Architect Documents Evaluation. Uh, and the uh, and that's sort of a, a, a simple methodology, which is really based on st stakeholder dialogue, because you have to think uh, in, in in you know in, uh, about value in, in multiple you know for multiple stakeholders. There's of course client and investor who, who pays for for the work that is going to happen. So there's a business model, but there are also future users, and there's a wider community which this project happens to be in, and all these people and all these values are going to be studied, you know, in the planning phases, they're going to be accommodated while you design. And we have to get back and figure out, you know, what actually happened, you know, afterwards and adjust as we go. So there's a rule of, so, or that's, that's a line of social science uh, approaches that you can could go about using in this, you know, using interviews, observation studies, questionnaires to understand the social value. Uh, and of course, there's also the environmental, you know, uh, cost and benefit that can be studied by the sort of in the field of, of architecture and environmental engineering. And of course, we have to extend, you know, our economic understanding from a cost perspective to a value perspective where we actually accommodate, you know, the, uh, the future outcomes of, uh, of, of this project.
as it unfolds. There are some pioneers who have been working with this for a while. This is art architects who have been doing social studies, you know, as part of those things. Uh, 3XN, you know, been working with well-being and health. These are actually quite well understood design principles that we do use. We just have to be more specific, more clear about how we communicate this and document the, res the results. This has been the best uh, workplace design uh, for, for several years in Denmark, for instance. And of course, we need to uh, to work with the environmental impacts and particularly the uh, the biodiversity and the um, and the uh, climate uh, climate impacts. And we have cases where you see that uh, the selection of materials, you know, with the next big gender, I believe, can be reduced uh, by uh, 40 to 70, 60 percent, you know, using circular design, uh, design for the simply uh, circular economy uh, design principles. So uh, there is a lot to be said for the power of architecture. And of course, here we have the social value where we accommodate, you know, the social values and try to give monetary terms to describe them with, as I explained before with the uh, case uh, of the, uh, the, the urban park. Uh, in this book, we also give the microphone to some of the architects who uh, work with this and they explain, you know, how does it make sense to their business, their way of working as architects, and how does it make sense to their clients, of course, and the people that they work with. Uh, because if it doesn't give, you know, uh, a value to all, you know, it won't happen. Uh, so there are the tips and tricks for, for, for getting going. Of course, all this value talk, you know, is completely uh, applicable to working with the um, with the uh, United Nations 17 Deve Sustainable Development Goals, because we want to move these from sort of intentions, you know, well, of course, we're going to improve the world. But as far as we stay with the design principles only and the design intentions, and we don't really go back to the crime scene and figure out, you know, what happened? Did we actually improve what? And did we, or did we actually destroy something which happens, you know, uh, sometimes? Or what are the costs? Well, then we can't really uh, figure out, you know, how to improve our impact. So bringing this accountability uh, and the measuring of impacts into uh, the equation, I think, is very important. You can download these uh, these publications on our website. You have the link here. I believe the presentation will be shared afterwards. Uh, and you can find more uh, cases and, uh, and delve into, into that if you're if you're curious. You're also very welcome to uh, contact me if you have uh, questions on, on this agenda. And again, uh, this is really just to warm up for uh, taking the pulse, you know, uh, figuring out where are we with the uh, United Nations Sustainable, Sustainable Development Goals in two years from now. That's halfway to 2030 when we have to, uh, you know, deliver on the sustainability goals. And I really hope to uh, see see you uh, in Copenhagen when that comes. And uh, we hopefully have a vaccine for the COVID uh, that will allow us to uh, meet again in, in, in person.